Welcome to another session of OOIDA's Business Education Series. OOIDA is proud to offer the most comprehensive business education series available for America's professional truck drivers. We would like to thank our many friends in the industry who take educating America's professional drivers as seriously as we do. With the help of these sponsors, we've been able to make the programming on the Business Education Series free to all drivers. Hello, everyone. My name's Tom Ginn. I'm the host for the OOIDA Online Education Series, and today we've got a great program for you. A lot of information, but we're going to do it in a little bit different format than some of the other programs. Today, we're going to listen in on a conversation between Tom Weekly, the Director of Operations for the OOIDA Foundation, and Clay, who is a CVSA inspector with MoDOT. Clay was also with the Missouri Highway Patrol Department before he joined MoDOT, so he really does have an understanding of the challenges that truck drivers face in their daily routine. We had the opportunity to film Clay doing a Level 1, a Level 2, and a Level 3 inspection. And then Tom and Clay sat down and talked about what was going on in the film. I think you're going to find it really interesting. It doesn't matter whether you're a new driver or you're a driver that's been hauling loads for years. Understanding what that inspector is looking for and why they're doing it is critical to your operation. I hope you enjoy this program. Let's listen in to Tom and Clay. Clay has worked both for the Highway Patrol, as they stated, and also uh, with MoDOT now. And, and that's one of the things that we've learned as truckers out there is that uh, different agencies uh, within the state do a lot of these inspections. Uh, and you're never really sure, you know, who has the authority to do what sometimes. And yet we hope and we assume that most of these inspections are pretty much formalized so that we can kind of, uh, you know, understand there's a standard procedure involved. And I think that's that's really the case. But, I, Clay, I, I'm going to throw that out to you and just say, is there a kind of a, a standard uh, form or formula for doing these inspections? Um, there is a standardized testing that we all go through, a schooling um, there's several weeks. The North American Standard Part A class is a week long. Um, that's where you get into driver issues, you know, log books and what to look for with the driver. Um, the Part B is also a week long course. It is where you get into the vehicle, you know, checking the components of the vehicle, brakes, tires, frame, you know, all that kind of stuff. And that's also a week long course. Um, you get into the motor coach stuff. That's, you know, that's some additional training. Hazardous material is additional training. And, you know, it's, so it is all standard. They should all go through those courses. And that course is all taught by the same people in North America. So whatever inspection you get or wherever you get that inspection, it should all be identical. Those, ins those inspectors should have all gone through that identical training. So they should be doing the, doing the inspection almost identically. You know, they may have a little different order they do it in, but they should be checking the same things. Well, that's good. That makes, us, that makes us all feel a little bit better because that's something we, we certainly want to have happen is that we know what to expect. What, um, what's the purpose of the inspection anyway? Um, purpose of the inspection is just to mainly keep the highway safe. You know, in, in, the, in Missouri where we're at, across the nation, um, we're looking to help take the equipment off the road that should be or should be fixed, you know, before it continues on. Uh, we're looking, like I said, we're looking at equipment. We're looking at drivers, you know, some driver issues, fatigue qualifications, that kind of stuff. So we're mainly just trying to keep the road safe is what we're there for. I know that there are a number of different levels of inspection, and we hear about that, level one, a level two, a level three, I think all the way up to seven, eight, nine in some cases. But the, the primary ones is, that I remember from driving out is level one, two, and three, which are the, I think, probably the more uh, the ones that are done the most often because that affects more drivers. Could you kind of basically go, what's the difference between a level one, two, and three inspection? Sure. A level one inspection is where we check everything. When a, a truck would come in, we're going to check the driver. Um, we're going to check through all his paperwork, you know, registration, log book, that kind of stuff. Um, and then we're also going to check the vehicle. You know, we're going to check the driver and then we're going to check the vehicle too. A level one is where you get underneath it and check everything. We're going to check the brakes, you know, get on the creeper and, and look everything over. A level two inspection is we're just going to mainly look at the truck. It's going to be the, the again, we're going to look at the driver, 
and then we're going to look at the truck, but we're not going to necessarily get underneath it and check the brakes and everything, check the brake measurements. It's going to be more of a walk around inspection, checking the lights and tires and that kind of stuff and any obvious defects, but we're just not going to get underneath it. And level three inspection might be where you, where we would just talk to the driver. We'd bring the, bring the driver in, um, look over his logbook and all his permits and medical cards and all that kind of stuff, driver's license, and just make sure the driver, you know, we don't check a vehicle on a level three, it's just the driver. Clay, tell me, you mentioned that CVSA decal, and that's something that we haven't mentioned yet, and that's the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance. And, and just exactly what is CVSA, and what does that decal do for you? The decal, once you get the decal on the windshield, is just an indicator for roadside personnel on when you've been inspected, you know, the last time it was inspected. And it's just an indicator for us that you've been checked recently and not to check it again, really, unless we see something wrong or the, the FMCSA has a special check where we need to check it anyway. We can tell by the color, the number, and which corner is removed off the top, what month of the year it was issued. So they're good for the remainder of that month plus the next two. So they're good for up to three months, just as an indicator that you've been checked and to not stop it again unless we see something wrong with it. For the new drivers and, and perhaps even for some of the old drivers out there uh, that aren't familiar with them, the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance uh, is basically basically an alliance of, of safety inspectors and uh, of the various states that have come together and, and kind of formalized uh, and hopefully standardized a lot of the inspection procedures and programs as well as the fact they are the ones that uh, uh, initiate and, and look at what safety factors could be involved to, to for the out of service criteria. Uh, that basically am I basically correct there, Clay? It is. It's kind of a combination between um, industry and enforcement. I mean, it's kind of the they kind of get together to agree on what are safety issues and you know maybe what aren't. But they it's a kind of a combination of the two. It's an attempt to kind of standardize things, and, 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 and it is a meeting of, of, the, of the two groups that are involved in the safety issues on the road. Right. Okay, we've, we've covered the three basic inspections that we're going to look at, and uh, I guess the first question most of us ask is, okay, why, why are they pulling me over? What's, why did they single me out on this? Is it really a singling out process, or uh, just what exactly triggers that inspection, Clay? There's, there's a lot of information there, a lot of data that goes into who might be inspected for any given time. Um, roadside, if you're like at a scale house facility, scale facility when the, you know, the inspector may be sitting, you know, as close as five feet away from that truck as it rolls by. So he may see something wrong. You know, if he sees any mechanical or any violations or anything wrong with the truck, that's, I would say that's the majority of where the scale house inspections come from. So they see something wrong, so they do the inspection on you. They also have the ISS, the inspection selection system. They enter your DOT number, and it pops up that, you know, you may be a new entrant carrier. You may, they might, may not have enough data on you, so they want an inspection on you just to get data in their database, you know, just to have some information on you. Um, and maybe it, it might show up, your company record would show up that this company has had a history of whatever violation, they, they want more inspections. So that may be another, another reason why you get checked. Um, it could come down to if you're not a common truck through that area, the scale person may think, well, I haven't seen this guy before, so I'm going to check them, what's going on, you know, who they are. And it could even come down to being, you know, you're in a road, you know, say a, a portable scale sees you somewhere and you just happen to be at a, a nice pullout where there's a good place to work. It may be, you know, you may be doing nothing wrong. You may not have anything wrong, but you're just at a location where it's a good place to work. So they're going to check you while you're there. I mean, it's, it's, it could be anything from having something seriously wrong to, so not having anything wrong when they pull you in. It just kind of varies on the day and the time and where you're at. This first part of the video obviously is where you're, you're pulling the truck up for inspection. That looks like it can be a little dangerous situation from time to time. Sometimes you just have to be aware of the, your, you know, your surroundings, the conditions, the roadside, you know, if you're on a busy highway. A lot of times these are done at a scale house or some safe facility where there's not a lot of traffic, but some of the roadside guys do have to be aware of the traffic and oncoming traffic. Certainly, that you got that eighteen wheeler pulling up on you pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> gotta got be, but gotta be careful, and watchful. Why don't you just kind of take us through what's the first thing you're going to do once you you've got him pulled up where you want, and you you, you stop the truck. What's your next step? I like to go up and introduce myself to the driver, kind of tell him you know what's going on, who I am, who I work for, you know what I'm doing. Going to do the going to do the truck inspection or the driver inspection, whatever you know, whichever one it might be. Um, if I see something wrong, a lot of times, you know, me personally, I like to tell them, like, hey, the reason I stopped you, 
I saw you had a headlight out or, you know, or I stopped you just because, you know, I didn't really see anything wrong, but we're just going to get some data on you. So I like to let them know up front why I stopped them just to kind of take them, you know, get them at ease a little bit. And then uh, after I visit with the driver a little bit, I'll kind of find out where he's coming from, where he's going. I will at that point usually get his permit book and start looking through the permits or check the log book, you know, the previous seven days, today and the previous seven days, see how current he is, he or she is. We'll get the driver's license, the medical card, and all the permits, that kind of stuff. What's a, what's a common problem that you, you're finding in this kind of situation? What would be the most common thing you're looking for? The things we run into is the drivers need to make sure you have your logbook current to the last change of duty status. So whenever you changed and, and did whatever you were doing, you know, if you went from driving to, to parked or to loading or to inspecting, you just need to make sure you change in your logbook, change it to the right duty status at the time, and you should be current up to the last one. The last one may be four hours ago when you stopped or when you first got in and started driving. So it may be, you may be behind, you know, you may be four hours from where you did it last, but you're still current because that was your last change of duty status. Okay, uh, this is, uh, you're looking at the log book, you checked his permits and all of his licenses, his insurance, his health card, all those things. Uh, is that pretty much complete a level three inspection? Pretty much, yeah. When you go through that, the level three, like I said, is just the driver, the driver certifications and qualifications and medical card, log book, that kind of stuff. That's, that's the end of the level three inspection. Uh, once the paperwork's all done, the driver signs everything, you know, we've looked everything over, the possible outcomes will be the driver is going to be on his way, you know, he'll sign the inspection and be on his way, or he could be placed out of service. You know, if we find things wrong with log book or driver's license, he could be placed out. The vehicle at this point would not get any, would not get a CVSA decal or be placed out of service or be no violations issued to the vehicle because we've just checked the driver. We haven't looked at the vehicle yet. Okay, we pretty much completed the level three inspection. Uh, so Clay, why don't you kind of walk us through uh, what comes next? Looks like we're getting ready to do a, uh, the level two inspection. On the level two, we're just gonna walk around the truck. We stay on the outside of the truck. We don't get underneath it. Um, we're gonna start. We chalk. The, we try to always chalk the wheels. Just you know, safety first. And we'll chalk the wheels. We'll come back out and I'll just get all your communications down with the driver. Kind of let him know what you're gonna be doing. Sometimes you're on a crowded road, you know, busy road where it's hard to hear. Kind of tell him what you're gonna be doing. Um, that's what we're probably talking about here is telling him, you know, the hand signals and stuff we're gonna use when we get out in front where he may have trouble hearing you. We'll just go from here. From this point, we'll go up to the, I usually go to the front of the vehicle and check all the lights. I like to, my personal preference is I like to check all the lights on the vehicle first and then go around and check some of the other things. Um, it seems like probably every inspector has their own little system they have down to where they do it. You know, they should all be checking the same thing, but they may go about it in a different way. Um, you see here, we start by checking all the lights. We'll check turn signals, headlights, um, just anything on, you know, any lights on the front. And then we'll get into, I believe here in a second, we're going to get into windshield wipers. Uh, you know, and that's, those are the kind of signals you're talking about with the driver before you get started. Windshield wipers and check the horn. As we're going along the side here, we should have just checked the back of the truck. Even though there, there's a trailer hooked onto this vehicle, the, the lights on the back of that truck are required lights. They need to work also. Um, turn signals, brake lights, tail lights on the back of that cab should be working. And then we'll come back to the back of the trailer, check the lights back there, you know, there again, marker lights, ID lights, turn signals, brake lights, tail lights. The back of the cab lights need to work, but they shouldn't place you out of service for those not working. The out of service criteria comes in to when on the trailer, you know, your rearmost vehicle when the brake lights may not be working or turn signals aren't working, then that's where the out of service would come in and be on the back of the trailer. Um, once we're done with that, then I like to go around and check, start at the back at the front of the truck. I like to check the tires and wheels. You, know. you, had, you rubbed your hands around, what are you looking for? Uh, I'm just that? looking for debris or maybe even sometimes cuts or gouges in the tire. Um, check all the lug nuts, make sure they're tight and all the wheel fasteners are tight. I'm looking for loose components, you know, the fuel tank, make sure it's on there mounted properly, just nothing's about to break loose or fall off. Checking all the connections, you know, the hoses, make sure everything's hooked up right, not fraying or, you know, kinked or broken hoses there. All the steps and all the accessories should be mounted securely. Um, there again, we're going to check the tires. Each each set of tires and wheels on each side, we're going to check those just to you know make sure they're they're snug, secure, the fasteners are secure. Make sure there's nothing kind of make sure it's not hitting the frame or hitting the other tire. 
make sure there's no debris inside the wheels, you know, inside the tires rubbing on each other. Um, we're also looking at just things we see on the trailer. I'll get underneath here and I'll look to make sure the kingpin, make sure it's all locked in there like it's supposed to be. Everything looks like it's seated and mounted or seated and locked in there properly. We're just looking at the frame, make sure the frame of the trailer is in good shape there. As we're walking along the back, we're going to check the bottom rail of the frame and then also the top top of the roof. And, you know, that's part of the frame, too, is on the outside of that trailer, checking the frame on that. And then here again, we're going to check the same things here, tires and wheels, just make sure they're all aired up. A lot of times on a tire, you know, you, it could be flat, and you won't know it by looking at it. You can't tell it's flat until you kick it or hit it, and then you'll realize it's flat. So we try to thump every tire, you know, just to make sure their pressure, you know, they have pressure in them. Um, they're again checking the lug nuts. And then we'll just walk around the back of the trailer. We've already checked the lights. We might check the rear end protection, all that kind of stuff, you know, just eyeball that as we go by. And then coming up the other side of the trailer and the truck will be the same thing. We're going to look at the same things pretty much we did on this side. That is pretty much the end of the level two inspection. We're just doing the walk around. We've already done the driver part of it. So we've already done the level three. We've, we've finished with the driver. We've walked around everything on the outside of the truck. So sometimes this, this would be the end of the inspection. If they're going to do a level two, the driver's going to get the paperwork. He's going to sign off on it. And then he's going to be, at this point, the truck or trailer could be placed out of service also. You know, it might have no violations. It still would not get the CVSA decal we talked about. That only is issued on a level one. Um, at this point, the truck, could, truck or trailer could be placed out of service, or it could be, you know, it might even have violations that are written up but allowed to continue, and they can fix them before it's redispatched. Okay, so that's uh, basically what a driver would call a walk around, a level two inspection. Okay, then we've completed what would constitute a level three and a level two. Now let's go into a level one inspection, Clay. Okay, the, this is a complete inspection where we check everything. On this process here I'm going to have the driver get out and open the hood you know, just in case I'm going to get a little better look at the steering and brake components and the engine components and that kind of stuff I want that driver to open the hood just in case that hood latch should fail I don't want to have to be responsible for replacing their hood you know when it falls to the ground so the driver does that I have him get back in the truck um, I've explained to him what I'm doing I'm probably going to have him get in the truck at this point and we're going to do things like uh, He's going to rock the steering back and forth. I'm going to look for looseness you know, on the steering components. Just make sure it's tight. Everything's in good shape there. Not welded repairs, that kind of thing. The next thing we're doing here is we're going to check the brakes, the push rod travel to see if the brakes are out of adjustment. The first thing we do there is we mark them with a the chalk, and then we have them apply the brakes, and then we measure them to see how far, they, how far out they come. We would compare that with our out-of-service criteria or violation criteria and see if it's a violation or not. And then... Uh, we're going to go back and check the rest of the brakes. Sometimes if you're, if you're able to do this in a good location, they prefer, we prefer that all the brakes are checked on one application where we go along and mark them all once and then go back and check them all with one application of the brake, of the foot pedal. Sometimes that's just not possible where you're located at and stuff, you know. So when we're doing these inspections, the air pressure in the truck should be between 90 and 100 pounds to get an accurate reading. And then we'll go back, or again, I'll mark them all with chalk stick, and then I'll have him apply his brake, and then we'll just measure, see how far out they come, and then compare that with the criteria for a violation or out of service. Then also under here, we're, we're not only checking the brakes, we're going to be looking at the frame, looking at everything we can't see doing the walk around. We're going to be underneath it looking up, just getting a different angle of things. And we just mainly look for things that are broken or, you know, look for things that just don't look right. You know, something. sometimes you just see things that just kind of catch your eye that that's not right, and then that'll kind of key in that there's something down there that you need to be looking at. While we're underneath the truck on the creeper truck and trailer, we're also checking things like we can see the, we can see the frame components a lot better from underneath, you know, looking for sagged or cracked frame rails. Um, we're, we're looking for uh, frayed or nicked airlines, hoses, you know, chafing, that kind of thing. We all could also can maybe see some of the fuel components, fuel lines and stuff, you know, make sure they're not hanging down too far. And just anything that we can't really see from the outside, we just get a lot better view from underneath while we're on that creeper to just a different angle of the things we're looking for. One of the things that's not shown on this video, something that should be done, is after the inspection is pretty much over, after we've checked everything, the brakes and everything, the inspector may have the driver get out and unhook the glad hands and just place them on the deck between the truck and the trailer, just place them on the deck and then get back in the truck and apply the brakes. And when that happens, we're, we're checking the tractor protection valve here. When they hit their brakes, as soon as they unhook that glad hand, the trailer brakes should set up 
and then they should be able to hit their foot brake once or twice to allow them to maintain enough pressure to get off the side of the road. When they unhook that when they unhook that glad hand, if the truck loses all of its pressure too, then they have a faulty tractor protection valve and then that would be a violation also. But that, that's not shown on the video and that's something that should be should be happening. The possible outcomes for a level one inspection, you know, after the complete inspection would be um, if the driver at this point, you know, we could still place the driver out of service for the level three part of it, you know, for his paperwork or logbook or driver's license could be placed out of service. And at this point, the tractor or the trailer could be placed out of service, um, depending on what the violations were discovered. And if there were, there were no violations, they would even get it. They would get the CVSA decal for the truck and the trailer. Um, there could be violations noted that's not required to be placed out of service. So they would be allowed to continue on and then fix that vehicle before it is redispatched. But once there are vehicle violations discovered that are an out-of-service item, those those violations have to be corrected at the scene. Either somebody comes out and they fix them there, or they tow that vehicle somewhere else to get them fixed before it's allowed to drive again. Those vehicle, those violations need to be corrected. Um, once this inspection is done, in this case here, it's an, it's a roadside inspection. We'd go back to the vehicle. We would print it all off, print it all off, have you sign it, give you a copy of it, and you'd be on your way. You know, if there's no out-of-service violations, and then once it's signed off on. We take it back in and we upload it, and then it goes into the ISS system, and they that's the way it's tracked by CSA and everything tracks your scores, and that's the way that is the way everything is rated. You know, the drivers can get a rating, the companies get a rating. And that's that's where this data, the CSA now is all roadside data driven, and this is exactly where that documentation, where that information comes from. You might notice on the video the driver is probably going to get in and out of the truck two or three times. Um, it's just very important always to be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of officer safety, driver safety. We're just kind of being aware that you might be getting in and out, facing traffic or walking in traffic. So just, you know, no matter what, all else, the inspection is, it's nice to have the inspection, but it's even better to go home at the end of the day. So we're more worried about driver and officer safety than, than getting the inspection done. You know, just make sure at the end of the day, everybody's safe. Uh-oh, looks like we've come to that part of the show where I have to be the bearer of bad news. I'm sorry, but it looks like we're completely out of time for this program. I want to thank Tom and Clay for sharing this information with us, and I also want to remind you of something that you heard early on in this program. The point was, the purpose of the CVSA inspections is to keep the highways safe, both for the general public and for America's professional truck drivers. I hope you'll join us for other business education programs on the OOIDA Business Education Series. Simply log on to www.oidaonlineeducation.com. In the meantime, remember, you're important to us. Please take care of yourself. And don't forget, OOIDA is the only organization that's been fighting for the rights of individual truck drivers since 1973. If you'd like to join us in this fight, just give us a call at 1-800-444-5791.